Welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews, and I'll save you guys some time right off the bat. The Ghost 15 looks very similar to the 14, however, it has a much softer midsole and a slightly different upper. That's pretty much it, but we'll go into the details here, and uh, yeah, let's do this. Before we get started, I do want to say that these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, they didn't have a chance to preview this video, and the smile synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing as it really helps me make these videos. Here we go. The Brooks Ghost is probably one of the most popular running shoes in America. It's your conventional neutral daily trainer that kind of does a little bit of everything. And if I had to pick one running shoe to represent all running shoes across everything, it would probably be the Brooks Ghost. It's kind of what you expect out of a running shoe. You know, great upper, solid midsole, tons of rubber on the outsole, and, you know, just a ton of padding the ankle and Achilles area. It's kind of just like your standard go-to running shoe. The Ghost 15 is also very accommodating. It comes in a wide variety of sizes and widths. I think all the way up to like a men's size 15 and like a 40 and also in the narrow sizes as well so no matter your foot shape and size there should be a version of this for you which is quite nice not all I guess brands or models do that the other cool thing is too Brooks did increase the sustainability element I believe last year it was like 9% recycled materials and this year it's all the way up to 24% recycled materials but I think most of the recycled materials being found in the upper and tongue so Brooks is kind of trying to make their shoe lineup a little bit more eco-friendly and that's kind of seen here with the Brooks Ghost 15 as almost a quarter of it is now recycled content for the staff the shoe costs $140, does lose a little bit of weight, coming down one-tenth of an ounce, now weighing 9.8 ounces. As far as the stack height, I believe it remains unchanged with 36 millimeters in the heel, 24 in the forefoot for that very aggressive 12 millimeter drop from heel to toe. Brooks loves to kind of stick with this 10 to 12 millimeter drop range, and that's no exception here with the Ghost 15. And speaking of the midsole, we'll bring in the Ghost 14 to compare. So this is the 14 and this is the 15. As you can see, they look almost identical. There's some different sculpting there. However, the biggest difference comes with the composition of the DNA Loft V2. So they're both DNA Loft V2, but the version on the 15 is going to be much softer and lighter compared to the predecessor. Now, DNA Loft V2 is a mixture of rubber, air, and some kind of foam compound. And according to Brooks, this is a less dense foam compound thus making the 15 a softer and lighter experience compared to the 14. Now if we go to like the Brooks uh, DNA Loft V3 which is over there in the corner on the glycerin that's a super critical foam so they did not change the ghost to a super critical foam or nitrogen infused foam sticking with a DNA Loft V2 and then just changing some of those components mainly the, the foam component at the end making it a little bit less dense. So we have a softer lighter version here with the 15 as far as the midsole goes even though they do look pretty much identical with a little bit of sculpting changes. And something else I noticed while trying these shoes is that the softer foam on the Ghost 15 is going to be a little bit more flexible. You have a slightly easier bend in the forefoot region. The shoe has a little bit more twist to it, while the Ghost 14 is going to be a little bit more rigid and a little bit stiffer. So you do have some increased flexibility here with the new updated softer foam in the Ghost 15. So that may be a plus or minus depending on who you ask, but it is noticeably more flexible um, and a little bit more dynamic as far as the motion goes with the 15. So what does all of this mean? Well the 15 is noticeably softer compared to the 14. I would actually go as far as to say that the 15 feels softer than the glycerin. Now the biggest differences between this version of the Ghost and the new glycerin with its nitrogen infused foam is that the Ghost is going to have a more slim down package. It's not as bulky. It's going to feel slightly softer while the glycerin is probably going to be a little bit more durable with that nitrogen infused foam and it's not as easy to bottom out and has a bit more energy return to it. So that is something to note. Another big kind of comparison between the 14 and the 15 is that the 15 is probably going to be a little bit better for some of those slower days because the midsole is going to be softer and I think the 14 is going to be slightly snappier with that firmer stiffer midsole so it really comes down to your personal preference I don't think the 15 is really bad at you know quick tempo days I would personally just go with like a tempo shoe or a plated option um, but for the most part I will say I think the 14 is a slightly faster option while the 15 works better at those slower paces just because it's a little bit more flexible and is going to have that softer much softer midsole. 
Moving on to the upper, this is where Brooks said they did make some slight tweaks here for an improved fit, and this is where I actually messed up. When I was looking for a, a Ghost 14 to compare, I grabbed the limited edition, so this has like the knit upper and not the engineered mesh that came standard with most Ghost 14 models. So we'll set this aside for now, but for the most part, I was quite happy with the upper here. It feels like your very standard um, Brooks Ghost upper. It fit true to size. I thought the breathability was quite nice here. And as far as the tongue goes, it's pretty much identical to the previous version, moderate amount of padding. It's non-gusseted. I wish they would just gusset it and it would make life so much better. Laces are flat and again the same as last year. Ankle and Achilles area, same amount of padding, feels very comparable to the previous version and same thing goes for the heel counter. I was quite happy with the fit. My only real qualm here is that I do wish the tongue was gusseted. But other than that, it feels like a very standard Brooks upper. I really didn't notice any major differences even though I did have the knit version from the previous version. I wore one shoe on each foot um, while running for some different things and it, I don't know, they felt pretty much the same and I was quite happy with the overall fit and feel here and again fit true to size. Moving to the outsole we have pretty much the exact same lug pattern however Brooks did change the rubber type or at least it feels like it. It now feels like a gummy like rubber texture which hopefully will improve durability. It seems to be holding up quite well and I was actually quite happy with the grip. I do know last year some people complained about their ghost having uh, the tread wear quite quickly so I think Brooks made this rubber change to try to address that and I've been quite happy with it so far. It's again your very traditional Brooks setup. You have that harder rubber in the back for added durability and it appears they changed the forefoot rubber as well but it's just kind of like your classic thick um daily training rubber outsole, if you will. So at the end of the day, the Ghost 15 is basically just a softer version of the Ghost 14 with that new updated midsole compound. It really comes down to what you like with your particular running style. If you prefer a slightly firmer, snappier shoe, that might mean the 14. And if you like a softer, squishier experience, a little bit more flexibility, then I think the 15 will be right up your alley. The upper, according to Brooks, they, made some, they said they made some small tweaks. And again, I messed up by grabbing the limited edition knit version of the Ghost 14. But either way, I tried running with you know, each shoe on each foot and it, it felt pretty good. I really didn't notice any massive differences. The upper worked well, fit true to size. It feels, again, very much like a Brooks upper. Um, I wish they would gust at the tongue. I said that about the, the glycerin and all the other Brooks shoes I've tried. Um, but again, it just feels very much like a Brooks shoe with a softer midsole and they did update the rubber on the outsole. So if that sounds appealing to you, I say go for the Ghost 15. And if you're someone who likes a slightly firmer, snappier experience, go for the Ghost 14. But either way, feels like a great Brooks shoe and uh, I didn't have any major problems. It just feels like your standard classic neutral daily trainer.